The Immersive Digital Experiences Alliance is a non-profit industry association developing a family of royalty-free technical specifications to enable the digital future. Our members bring world-class experience in light field and holographic imaging, distribution networks, and content creation. You can learn more at immersivealliance.org. The IDEA Specialized Contract Track consists of eight segments covering all aspects of immersive media. In this segment, we'll help you understand the different types of immersive displays. Hi, I'm Pete Luday. Thanks for joining us for this segment where we'll review some of the various technologies used for immersive displays. I'll be presenting a taxonomy of advanced displays and showing you some current examples of what's out there. We'll also take a moment to discuss angular resolution or ray density as a figure of merit. Although I'm honored to serve as a chairman of IDEA, the Immersive Digital Experiences Alliance, for this segment, I'll be sharing my own research as an industry consultant. Any use of confusing terms or errors are my own and not the responsibility of IDEA members. This is new turf, including use of terms such as holographic, so we'll appreciate your feedback. One way to characterize display systems is to consider three classes defined by optical properties of light emissions. The first example generates points of light, typically using the familiar concept of pixels. From each point, light is emitted isotropically, that is, roughly equal in all directions. A second example is emission of light rays using lenticular arrays, parallax barriers, or in some cases a coded aperture to direct light in a specific geometry and therefore form real points made by intersecting beams. The third example is light waves forming an image at your retina through the use of an interference pattern implemented through holographic displays or what's sometimes called nanophotonic phased arrays. Of course, in this taxonomy, there are a variety of subcategories for each of the display types. We'll talk about a few of them and share some examples of devices that are now commercially available, or in many cases in the R&D labs, with promise for commercialization within the next few years. Light field and holographic are perhaps the most discussed methods of creating a truly immersive image, meaning that they not only provide motion parallax and occlusion, but support viewpoint dependent light, such as specular reflections, and the holy grail removing the virgin's accommodation error, which means that your eyes can focus in free space, not just on the display panel itself. Let's start by considering today's typical display, an array of point emitters or pixels on a planar surface. Of course, these are used everywhere from mobile devices to the largest televisions and even cinema projectors. It's a little more interesting when you stack multiple planar displays on top of each other. One example of this that you might have heard of is Magic Leap 1. It uses dual planes per eye to allow you to shift your focus from near to far. This is accomplished through using an LCOS spatial light modulator with waveguide optics. There are some interesting approaches that have been used to manipulate the optical focus for each pixel on an HMD, a head-mounted display, as summarized in this excellent paper from Oculus Research. And it's not just limited to HMDs. Light space technologies is developing their third generation front view display using what they call multiple laminated volumetric switching screen. So next, let's switch to volumetric displays. Here, the points of light are positioned in a three-dimensional XYZ volume, but each of the points of light, the pixels, are isotropic, that is, they're emitting the light in the same direction, all directions. Of course, in real life, objects may look different when viewed from different angles, due to reflections of specular highlights or textures or just the characteristics of the surface itself. As described in this paper on volumetric display from the Optical Society of America, there are several techniques that have been used to create these volumetric points of light, including swept volume displays, generally involving spinning LEDs that are lit up at just the right instant to create the appearance of a full 3D object, or static volume displays, for instance using two infrared light beams that when combined in a chamber of heated cesium vapor form visible light, or a free space display, 
which may use light projected onto fog or use plasma to create the appearance of light in free space. This is, of course, very challenging to create anything resembling a real-life image, but research continues. A popular example of a volumetric display comes from Voxon Photonics. It uses an array of rotating LEDs and what they characterize as an ultra-high-speed digital light engine. This combination of hardware and software is capable of projecting over half a billion points of light every second onto a physical volumetric space. Next, we'll consider displays that use rays of light projected from a display surface. The idea here is that the same point on the display surface may appear very different when the viewer shifts position. A lenticular display uses lenses to selectively direct light to the eyes. A popular example is a LEIA display, which uses a unique diffractive backlight to create a matrix of 16 views, four in a horizontal axis, and four in vertical. This is the display technology that was recently used in the Red Hydrogen 1 phone that you may have heard about. An exciting example of using light rays is the Looking Glass Factory 8K display, which uses an 8K panel to provide 45 different views of horizontal parallax over a 50 degree field of view. It's combined with the necessary rendering software and the results are very effective. You can learn more about how this looking glass display is being used for applications today in another one of the IDEA content segments here at the SMT 2020 virtual conference. Don't miss it. Domenko is also developing a lenticular display, but this one is based on single viewer eye tracking. It's always a challenge to show these displays in a video capture since they're designed specifically to take advantage of the human visual system, but the result is very effective. The recent big announcement in this area came from Sony, who has announced the spatial reality display a few weeks ago. This is a tabletop display using a 15.6 inch LCD 4K panel fitted with a micro lens array to project left and right eye images. The high-speed sensor tracks eye movement to precisely render each eye's image as your viewing position changes. Continuing through our display taxonomy, we'll talk about true light field displays, which use very high density of light rays to recreate the image, or the planoptic function that is representing light coming from all directions to the viewer. So before we dig into some examples of light field displays, you might be wondering if light field images are created by a bundle of light rays and a simple lenticular display like an audio stereoscopic also uses light rays, at what point does it become a light field? Or asked another way, what does a human vision system require in order to make the scene indistinguishable from reality? Well, sorry to disappoint, but I don't know the answer to that one. This is still an area of active research regarding optical designs and the human visual system. But the answer probably lies in a number of rays that are available for viewing. This could be expressed as rays per degree of viewing angle. And I don't have this data to make an accurate comparison of this angular resolution of current displays. But we can use published data to estimate the ray density per screen area. That is, how many light rays are produced per square centimeter of the display surface. Here we can look at some typical autostereoscopic displays, such as the one on the left, which is based on a 4K panel and has about 3,000 rays per square centimeter. The Looking Glass Factory 8K display, about the same size, has four times the ray density since it's based on an 8K panel. That's around 12,000 rays per square centimeter. Now the Avalon Holographics light field display development kit is specified at 230 million rays, which works out to over 100,000 rays per square centimeter. And another example, the Fovi 3D development kit light field display will have over 1 million rays per square centimeter. So it's a difference of over 300 to 1 from 3,000 to 1 million rays per square centimeter. And the density might even increase in the future years by one or even two orders of magnitude as new sub one micron pixels are being developed to squeeze a lot more in. This will be an important evolution to watch over the next few years. Okay, let's take a look at a few examples of light field displays now in the lab. 
Lightfield Labs is a startup based in San Jose working on an advanced technology for large-scale light field displays. They've announced plans for a wall size and even a cinema size display based on small building blocks. Prototypes are being demonstrated now, privately, with beta systems expected within 2021 or 2022. Avalon Holographics in Newfoundland, Canada recently unveiled their first generation light field display. It's a 29 inch development system. It was designed for applications in the defense industry, medical imaging, and industrial design. There isn't much technical data publicly published yet, but the display is specified to emit over 230 million viewable rays, getting it to be a very high density. Foby 3D has been pioneering light field displays for over a decade. Their development kit 2 is claimed to be the highest resolution monochrome light field display available. The display area is small, about 90 millimeters squared, and can be configured with either a 90 degree or 60 degree field of view. It's driven by a rendering PC with refresh rate up to 22 hertz. Serial is a technology company spun off from the EPFL, the research institution based near Lausanne, Switzerland. They're building a portfolio of licensable technologies around using pinhole mask to create a light field display for head mounted applications. The result is the ability to realistically allow your eye to refocus between virtual objects that appear to be at different distances from the viewer. Serial expects the first implementations to be AR headsets starting next year. Fire is yet another startup working on light fields for head mounted displays. They're an offshoot of the Lockheed Martin Frame Skunk Works based in Austin, Texas. Fire's version of emulated reality uses small dual sided electro optics, which they claim will capture, augment, and then reproduce a light field image in the eyewear, but no public demonstrations of this so far. Many other companies are researching and developing light field displays, such as this Samsung patent for grading pixel array and image generator. Braylon, based in the San Francisco Bay Area, has announced development of a desktop light field display that they characterize as a panoramic, visually immersive experience with a horizontal field of view of over 100 degrees. Which brings us to our last category of holographic displays, which generate images through the interference pattern between wavefronts. This is where the distinctions sometimes get a bit fuzzy, because as you increase the ray density in a light field display, the result starts to behave more like a traditional interference hologram pattern. And typical use of diffractive optics in a holographic display will have limitations in creating objects whose appearance shifts at different viewing angles. This is frankly something that I've been trying to learn more about myself, and IDEA hopes to provide future tutorials about these advanced displays. In the meantime, let's look at some of the holographic displays that are in the labs today. VividQ is a small company based in Cambridge, UK, working on software for a computer-based holography initially in the application of single-user head-mounted displays and also heads-up displays. They've implemented a prototype HMD using diffractive holography with an LCOS spatial light modulator, but the magic is in their unique processing software. IMEC is a Belgian research institute with expertise in nano-electronics and image processing. They've been working on developing a spatial light modulator with tiny submicron pixels, along with the necessary holographic compression using JPEG Pleno. C-Real, based in Luxembourg, and not to be confused with the other C-Real based in Switzerland, is working on interference-based holographic displays using eye tracking to leverage a confined viewing window. Like some of the others, they're utilizing diffractive optical elements to create the image. Facebook Reality Labs has also published research on the efforts for a head-mounted holographic display using RGB laser light sources coupled with diffractive wavefront optics. And recently you may have seen the announcement from Tokyo University of Agriculture and Technology about a metasurface holographic cinema display. This is the frame sequential approach where tiny reflective surface relief holograms are stamped into plastic, similar to how vinyl records were made. 24 different plates are sequenced to achieve a 24 frame per second motion image at 2K by 2K resolution. So as you can see, there's lots of research going on regarding these new immersive display technologies. In summary, you can characterize these new families of displays as emitting points, rays, 
or waves of light. Points of light, basically pixels, are good with spatial resolution, but limited for reproducing realistic 3D world. Wave fronts are promising but difficult, and rays of light, like the light field display, could be a good solution, but we need to understand more about what angular resolution is needed to fool the human visual system. In regard to the new digital file format to represent the image, IDEA, the Immersive Digital Experiences Alliance, is shooting for the highest common denominator to support the most sophisticated display type, but it'll always be necessary to accommodate downscaling so the same image file can be used on any of these displays. Thanks for taking the time to join us for this segment today, and be sure to check out the other IDEA segments during your stay at the SMPTE 2020 virtual conference. Thanks for joining. Thanks for joining us in this segment from the Immersive Digital Experiences Alliance. IDEA is a nonprofit industry group developing a family of royalty-free technical specifications to enable the digital future. You can learn more at immersivealliance.org. You can join IDEA, download the ITMF specifications or white paper, or just join our mailing list to stay informed. Thanks for joining us today.